Talk Radio. You're in to all things music. Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome to Jackie's Groove, guys. This is Jack Bertoni, brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. You're all, to, um, all you're into all things music. Hey, guys, it's a another beautiful emerging uh, emerging Monday, if you will. The emerging artists, but I gotta have a hard time believing these guys are emerging, man, because I've become a fan of theirs in the last 48 hours, and uh, and I have a lot of friends in common, man. And my good buddy of mine, a guy I've recorded with and played live with over the years, Steve Ferrone's playing drums with these boys, and uh, I go all the way back to the you know, the early years of. Uh, Dark Sunglasses with my friend, uh, my buddy Frank Beard from ZZ Top. And also, too, the cool thing about the, uh, the Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Bryan band is that they're currently out right now with Blackberry Smoke, a group that I was made uh, familiar with about two years ago when my good friends of mine out of Iowa, a great uh, country rock band by the name of the New Black Seven, who I've recorded the last three albums with them. Uh, it's amazing. So with that said, everybody, welcome to the third show of Emerging Monday with my guest today. Uh, Kenneth and Travis from the Kenneth Bryan Band. Hey, guys, welcome to Jackie's Groove. What's going on? Hey, hey, how hey. you doing? Good to be here. You know Thanks what? for having us. Yeah, man, this is, you know, I'm, I'm all into three ways, but not, not this time, but we're going to have a good time anyways, man. So uh, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna break it up. If there's any delay at all, we'll forgive it. So and do me a favor, guys, when uh, you speak up just for the first uh, segment, let me know who's talking so I don't jump on everybody itself. So with that said, hey, guys, let me, I'm going to throw it both back to you. Let's start with Kenneth, if I may. Kenneth, growing up in uh, where you grew up, you know, I want you to share with the listeners worldwide where you grew up and uh, and and what type of music was coming out of the Bryan household and what inspired you. You started off uh, first, Kenneth. Well, I mean, you know, I grew up down south, man, South Alabama first, and then we moved to Gainesville, Florida, when I was about nine, in Tom Petty Land. And that down in the southeast, man, I mean, what I grew up with mostly to begin with was bluegrass. And, you know, gospel music and stuff like that. And right. was heavy into that when I was a kid. I just loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. And then what was on the radio back then was a lot of Tom Petty, a lot of Skinner, a lot of Allman Brothers, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, that is sort of, you know, was the thing that was just all around. You know, I mean, everybody down there, especially around Gainesville, everybody could play. A lot of great fiddle players, a lot of, you know, a lot of get-together, pick-and-party kind of things. And, and I kind of I learned how to to get around on a guitar doing that. Then when I was uh, you know, thirteen or so, I started getting into you know was hanging out in Gainesville couch surfing. I started getting into what was on the radio then in the nineties, you know, heavier stuff and and uh, and you know, for a minute, I, I pretty much it's hard to get away from you know, country and bluegrass and and all that. And my dad was heavy into blues, man, was heavy into BB King. And, and a lot of the Delta stuff, Sun House, and and I just had a you know, a lot, and a lot of songwriter stuff, John Prine, and you know, I just had a really good, you know, kind of a rich uh, upbringing musically, I believe. Dig it, dig it. And, so, and and Travis, how about you, brother? What was coming out of the speakers uh, of your family household? Well, my my mom wouldn't listen to anything but Alabama. <laughs> really. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, well, I mean, she listened to a lot of stuff, but she, of she was just obsessed with Alabama. Anytime they were coming, she was, my mom would travel five or six hours to go see Alabama if they were playing somewhere. I love it. But no, really, my influences came up. I have an older sister who is six years older, and uh, she was hanging out with a bunch of skater kids when she was like 12 and 13, you know, junior high, right. middle school age. And um, they were listening to some really cool music that I still listen to now. Uh, a lot of the post-punk and new wave stuff, and, uh, and even some of the you know, actual Bowery punk, uh, Dead Boys and um, New York Dolls and cool. 
then, you know, got into some more stuff like Joy Division and the Smiths and, and stuff like that. So I was just trying to emulate what she was listening. I thought they were cool, so I thought I'd try to be cool and listen to that too. And uh, and I just kind of fell in love with that stuff. I still love all that stuff. Um, and then uh, later on, um, I was about – I was already playing music. Uh, I was maybe 12 or 13 myself. And, right. Uh, I would sit in my room. I loved Guns N' Roses. Appetite for Destruction changed my life. And uh, I would sit in my room and play along to that record and play along to records that I liked. And my, I, I had a stepdad that came in my room one day and handed me a, a copy of Dark Side of the Moon. And he said, here, you're ready. Yeah. And then I dug real deep into that kind of stuff. So um, so kind of a, a mix, like Ken, just like Kenneth, you know, kind of all across the board kind of stuff. Um, I, I think one thing that Kenneth and I have in common musically have even though that uh, 10 times out of 10, uh, we will both pick a different thing to listen to at any given time. We probably wouldn't sit and listen to the same thing, wouldn't pick the same thing. Um, but we all, we tend to respect and like the same kind of stuff because it's, we both grew up in an eclectic mix of music. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and listening to the, you know, overall, you, you know, I'm a big fan of somebody you toured with, man, and that's Lucinda Williams. How was that? And, oh, and yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to coin one of your videos. I you, I, I cracked up because we all spent those times in those. I don't care if they're shitty honky tonks. I don't care if they're shitty nightclubs, uh, dodging you know um, beer cans or beer bottles or in some cases in wine glasses and so on. But when you now you're up in these major major stages now and you're playing to the likes of large audiences, anywhere between a thousand. I don't know what the largest audience you paid um, played for. I myself personally, with all the years I've been with the Beach Boys and Kenny G and so on. You know, uh, I played in front of audiences up to 100,000 people, and I didn't like it. Um, I, I freaked myself out. Maybe, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have gotten high when I walked on stage, but I didn't like it because I thought everybody was going to rush the stage. What is the biggest audience that you guys have played for to date? And uh, share with the listeners, did you like it, or do you guys prefer smaller, more intimate venues? Uh, hmm. Well, some of the festivals, that, this is Kenneth, some of the festivals that we played over the years, I mean, there's, you know, been – you know, 20, 50,000 people at some of these places. Right. But uh, most of the stuff we do is in between 1,000, you know, to 5,000 people or something. And that's kind of about perfect. I mean, I like it all. And growing up, like, you know, playing every little place in the country, and I mean everywhere, growing up, right. doing hundreds of dates, and, you know, every year, a lot of those years, it's nice to play, you know, big stuff where, you know, people are there, specifically for the music you know it doesn't matter it. you know to me it doesn't matter if there's you know 50,000 people there or if there's you know 500 people there it's just as long as you can as long as you know the sound system is good and you can do your thing it's mm -hmm. it's great playing theaters man because I think that's probably my favorite like we played last night I'm outside of this place right now a cargo in at the Whitney Peak Hotel in Reno uh Nevada with Blackberry and we're still here right now it's a travel day for us but um it's uh or tomorrow is a travel day but anyway uh we uh i think i think gigs like that where you have a thousand people to five thousand people and you can really communicate with them they're right there you know and, and you can get out and walk around the crowd you know, afterwards i always talk to people and, and say hi to everybody and that's that's pretty cool i mean you know when you start having to get into like festival security and you know too many passes and all that kind of stuff it, it gets a little hairy but I'm, I'm down with all of it yeah and kenneth, kenneth and travis let me ask you guys both a question when you guys are doing these festival situations um as a supporting act itself are you guys doing what anywhere between a 15 to a 45 minute set longer shorter tell me about it oh uh blackberry's giving us like an hour man because we love it really <laughs> Yeah, but like, okay, so Charlie's a good, you know, he's a good buddy of mine. I met him at a government meal show uh, late, earlier this year with Steve Ferrani, man. Steve was sitting in with Mule, and I started talking to Charlie, and I, I didn't really know, a, you know, a whole lot about where they came from. In terms of me and Charlie have a lot in common, like coming from bluegrass and getting a little weird and pension out. And, you know, so we, we just became real good friends, and he asked us if we wanted to come out and do these uh, five or six dates, and Really, you know, and, and it's been awesome because the first night they gave us an hour, last night was 45 minutes. I think there's nothing less than 45 minutes. Some of these acts that you open for, some of the headliners, you know, well, sometimes it's only like 25 minutes, so you really have right. to comb through your material 
and pick what's going to hit people, you know, uh, in the way that you, you feel the room is that night. You know, you kind of have to read the room as a, as a front man, you got to read the room. You know, if it's a certain kind of crowd, you don't want to like hit them with too much rock and stuff hard. Or if it's an Americana crowd, you know, kind of go for some of the other stuff or, you know, I think that's an important part of being a front man is reading the crowd and changing the set list up if need be. You know. let, me, let me ask you this question, um, and both to you, uh, Kenneth and Travis. How are there, meaning the headlining audiences, how are they welcoming you, man? Because nothing worse than going to see the headliner than having a fucking opening band. You know, and uh, mm-hmm. but when you guys are at the when you guys are at the echelon that you guys are and the professionalism that you're playing, have their audiences welcomed you with open arms? Man, yeah. Travis, go ahead and take that, man. Yeah, this is Travis. Um, yeah, it's been pretty unreal. Uh, the you know, we like to go out and talk to people, and we have that love. You know, that's that's kind of a nice little window of time between, uh, that that openers get. Uh, that you know, you can't really expect the headliners to do. They can't, right. you know, as much as they might want to, they can't necessarily go out and shake every hand um, or whatever. But that's a luxury that we have, and 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 I guess some people would see that not as a luxury but as a burden. But we certainly see it as a luxury. To go out and talk to people and, and see you know how how they're doing and you know, what they're up to and, and, and what they thought of the show and all that. And uh, it's just been really quite something that, you know, people uh, have been coming up to us and just being like, wow, you know, I, you know, I got here early because I wanted to, you know, whatever, I wanted to secure my seat or whatever. And I wasn't really right. expecting, you know, to see uh, something that I would really dig so much. And, uh, and you know, and, and one thing I've noticed on these last two shows, and we got it a little bit with ZZ Top and, and a little bit with Lucinda, you would this would happen from time to time. But um, the last two shows that we've done, which we've, we've done two so far with BlackBerry, their their audience they come up and they thank us, um, like a lot. Like people will come up and say thank you for that. That was really something, and we we just appreciate you guys coming out and playing. And and man, that's I mean that's about as good as you could ever hope to get. Somebody. Let me ask you. Let me ask yeah. you a quick question, all this too, Travis. Um, I know what Kenneth's yeah. playing. What are you bringing to the mm-hmm. flavor of the Kenneth uh, uh, Brian band? What are you playing? Share with the audience. Uh, uh, sonically. Are, are you are uh, share, what instrument are you playing? Hopefully, I'm bringing. Some, hopefully, I'm bringing something spiritually as well. But but sonically, uh, I'm definitely bringing. You know, I mean, like I'm more into textures, laying down a texture in order for him to, uh, and, and for the song itself, not necessarily Kenneth, but everybody, the song itself to, um, you know, for, for certain colors to pop. I just, I like to lay down the texture. Um, and you know, I mean, I definitely do the harmonies, uh, vocal harmonies and stuff like that, but guitar wise, you know, I mean, it, it'd be, I can't say that on there. Um, it would be stupid to try and compete and to have a have a pissing match guitar wise with Kenneth, it gets just, too busy, it man. Be... It, yeah, I only can speak it? out of that reason. I I can only speak out of this history. Um, Santana is out currently um, right now. They uh-huh. they they brought back their old Santana with uh, Greg Rowley and Neil Schoen and uh, uh-huh. and Michael Garabello and so on. And then all of a sudden, you know, it hasn't been a successful tour just for the fact that between Neil and Carlos, it is a pissing match. Who can outplay each other? Mm-hmm. And it gets way too busy on stage. So. They've learned that lesson, and there's egos involved and, and so on. But you know what? I, I, I just Let's get back to you guys for a second. As I said, over the last 48 hours, you know, I put my shit kickers on, man, and I've really, really gotten deep into your, your music. And let me tell you why. I mean, I'm loving songs like, you know, Prayer for Love and Welcome to Alabama, Beautiful Storm, you know, uh, Something Better, Tears, uh, uh, Texas by Tonight. But let me tell you something, guys. I'm a Harley Davidson writer, man. And when I flew on this <laughs> song right now called Tonight We Ride, what was the inspiration behind that? Yeah, what was the inspiration behind man. that song, man? Well, I'll tell you, man. I wrote that song uh, when I was living in Texas. And it's funny you said that because my dad, when we got, we just got to deal with Harley, man. Harley is backing us on a lot of stuff. Oh, good for and you, my man. Dad, Willie my, G. And my dad, said, my dad said, I know it's an old song, but he said, Tonight We Ride would be perfect for Harley. That's funny, man. So that's the second you know, person that said that. But yeah, I man. was living in Bastrop, Texas. And I was actually hanging out with a lot of banditos at the time. My neighbors were all banditos, man, which is, a, you know, a bike family down there in Texas that people probably have heard of before, but they have their own way of doing things, but they were really nice to me, and I love those guys. And, but it wasn't 
any kind of a motorcycle thing. It was I was uh, to just be you know full disclosure, man. I I was really screwed up, and I've been sober for like for nine years. But at the time, I was you, really man. hitting rock bottom, and uh, it was kind of just about all these different situations in my life that were going on at that time. You know, this chick and this you know that been dealing with this guy and the stuff that you know somebody trying to like go behind your back and do this and that and it's right and how it's just kind of like you know you know you either <clears throat> do something or you don't you know what i mean it's like with being in a band you know you're either in the van or the bus or you're not you know at a certain point all the reasons for something don't mean anything <clears throat> You know, you have to make a decision, le- you know, left or right or, you know, whatever. So that's kind of about that, man. And just, you know, now, you know and I appreciate, I appreciate, I, I appreciate you being honest, brother, because none of us walk the straight and narrow, man. My dear friend of mine, no. Jamie Wallen, uh, is the drummer for Tears for Fears. And he said to me before oh, we wow. did our interview, yeah, he said to me, he goes, Jack, he goes, uh, is there any no holes barred on the, on your show? I said, yeah, man. I said, you know, we're internet, we're, you know, we're satellite. You can say anything you want. He goes, I really want to share yeah. with the audience worldwide my sobriety. And he was sobri- uh, sober yep. for going on four years. I said, brother, come on, man. My good friend of mine, David Romero, the percussionist with Earth, Wind, and Fire, he celebrated his one-year anniversary, not of a bypass, but he had a whole new heart installed. And so the fact wow. of the matter is, man, if Kenneth can inspire one person, uh, male or female, that are struggling with addiction, man, God, you know, damn it, man, put your best foot forward. Because the bottom line is if one person – Stay straight because of your story. Then guess what? It was all worth it, man. But you know what's what's even more worth it right now, brother, is we don't have enough time right now. We're coming out of the first segment. Uh, You see how fast this thing goes. We haven't even talked in depth about your inspirations, what inspires you and who you inspired. So when we come back on the second segment, Travis and Kenneth, we're going to tear it up, man. I want to know more about the process when you guys walk in the studio. And I also want to know more about the yeah. process when you guys are walking on the stage, and so do the listeners worldwide. So with that said, you guys, do yourselves a favor, man. Um, when you can't listen to Jackie's Groove or any of the plethora of shows we have on Talk Radio, go to Google Play or go to iTunes and download our easy-to-use application, two words, Talk Second Radio. You can take Jackie's Groove and everything on Talk Radio on the Groove with you and on the go with you. And when we get back, these two brothers, man, I feel like I've known them for, you know, 15 minutes. No, no, no pun intended, man, and no joke involved. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is we're going to get more involved. So when we come back on segment number two, we're going to pick it up where we left off. And where we're going to leave off is this everything that's got to do with the Kenneth Bryan Band. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Grab yourself a, uh, a cocktail or a beverage and uh, use the boys' or girls' room. And we'll be right back after the short break. Guys, don't go anywhere. A lot coming up. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. The Moyer Entertainment Group, in conjunction with Dario, Radio Airplay, and Looploft, is keeping music in our local schools and presenting local talent to the world through the Temecula Valley Music Awards. Submissions for entry into the TVMA 2017 season are now open in all genres, including a youth category for artists under 18 for the October 7th Star Studded Awards Show, where 100% of the proceeds go towards supporting local music education in the Temecula Valley. Details, tvmawards.org. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. 
Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Todd Zuckerman from the rock band Sticks, and you're listening to my pal Jackie Bertoni on Jackie's Groove. Groove on, motherfuckers. <laughs> Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome back to segment number two of Jackie's Groove. Hey, guess who this is? It's Jackie Bertoni. Brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network here into all things music. I think we got uh, either Travis or Kenneth back on. I heard you guys drop. Are we both here, yeah. guys? I'm okay, here. Man. I'm, back. I'm, ha- I'm having a great time, man. Let me just tell you something. You know, we've been fortunate, Paul and myself and Florentino, uh, to hang out uh, at the um, Irvine Meadows, which is um, Verizon Amphitheater out here in Southern California. And the second, the last show, because they, you know, God knows the Irvine company needs more fucking land for parking lots and townhomes. Another great venue gone by the wayside. But we were hanging out with a gentleman by the name of uh, Zach Brown. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give it up to you. I'm going to give you props, Kenneth, man. You got that vibe. You got that Zach vibe in your voice, man. And and I'm really digging on it. Man, no, you know, and it's really cool. We would just talk on the break, guys, the listeners out there. Um, I've got coming on the show, yes, I'm bragging. You know, my dear friend is Michael McDonald, Doobie Brothers. And, but the founder of the doobie brothers is coming on man uh is tom johnston and uh i'm pretty i'm pretty jazzed actually i'm very jazzed about that but we're talking on the break because tom says hey man we're coming to southern california we're playing a great venue called humphreys i know you've played there many times and then just funny uh, travis and kenneth both said hey yeah man we're supposed to be uh opening up for uh, the doobie brothers and i go what a small fucking world man so we'll get a chance to hang out gentlemen we'll be able to eat some of that good food backstage and so on. Yeah, and talking, uh, talking about the stage, I want to know something here because, you know, I'm a road dog, man. I've been around uh, for more years than I want to admit and stuff. But I want to find out, you know, with the old and new and so on. When you guys are walking on stage in, in either a small venue or a large venue, are you guys more into um, in-ears uh, for monitors or do you still love the ambient sound of a wedge around you? Uh, we don't use in-ears. At, yeah, we don't use in-ears at all. Uh, God never God. have. and and. It's funny. It's uh, it's, I tried them, just couldn't get used to them. And uh, no. I actually had a conversation with uh, I'm just no name drop here because we're on you know radio. But with Dwight Yoakam about this, he can never you know he was talking about stage volume. I was talking to him at Forecastle Festival in Kentucky. And he said he could just never, as a country singer, get used to it. You know, he's just used to to feeling that come back you know through the monitor. And that's kind of where I'm at, man. I. I just, uh, I have a very specific kind of system. I, I don't even have my amp in the monitor. I point, I play an old Tweet Pro, and I kind of point it just a little bit towards me. Right, right. So, you know, unless we're playing some gigantic stage, I don't even have my guitar on the monitor. And, Trav, what about you? Uh, definitely, I like, you know, I like wedges. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have to have, depending on the size of the stage, uh, you know, I have to have a little bit of Kenneth guitar in my wedge certainly his vocals that i can harmonize with him um and sometimes even a little of my own guitar in the wedge but that's about it what Um, don't you guys want to hear in the stage volume we like to play off the stage volume when we can and you know you can't always do that uh depending on the stage and uh you know it's not always beneficial to the sound guy but uh when we can uh we like to use as much of our own stage volume as possible i guess is a good way to say it perfect and um, and, and to both what of you, don't we what, want in, yeah, the both of you. What don't you want to hear? Uh, well, I mean, I pretty much, I mean, feedback. Just, I, yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, 8K, Thank you. Um, no kidding, uh, man. I like to just have the drums next to me. I don't even need them right. in the monitor. I like to hear. I want to hear the kick. I want to hear the snare. I'm so confident in my guys over on the other side of the stage and Travis. 
uh, <clears throat> and Paul Travis is singing and playing, and Paul playing bass, that I know that it's cool over there. And if I need to hear them, I literally walk over there <clears throat> on that side of the stage to hear it. So, I mean, it's super old school, man, because we came up playing rock clubs and, <clears throat> and dive bars and honky tonks and stuff, man. So it kind of like it's hard to get the same feel, you know, um, right. with with like you know eight individual <laughs> monitor mixes and all that stuff. Exactly. So now, when you're when you guys are touring, it's are you guys a slave to the the system itself? Now, when you're out right now with Blackberry Smoke and or Tom Petty and so on and so forth. Our, I mean, we are the supporting act. You guys are the supporting act yourself, and it's. Uh, I hope that there's a lot of respect from not the audience, but also from the the, the, the crew, if you will. So when oh, you guys man, are out yeah. there, yeah, oh, yeah are yeah. you guys bringing your own monitor guy, or are you guys de- um, just dealing with the headliners guys in the way of uh, sound on stage and sound in the in the arena? No, we're we're either using the house or you know Blackberry's guys for lighting or or what? Like, okay, example like the lighting guy for Blackberry is amazing. And he, usually a lighting guy won't give full access to the house guy, but he's like, here's right. everything, you know. And the same thing, like, if you have, like, especially Blackberry's guys, ZZ, um, Petty's guys, they all, they know us, and they, they know the music, and, and we're all sort of like road dog, pirate, similar people. And so it's all good, you know. Like, and we just, we were trying to figure out hotel rooms for Sturgis, and we just, we were just calling, you know, Blackberry's TM Scott and to try to figure it out. And everybody's work. Everybody works together, man. Cause I mean, you have to, you know, everybody's got to be happy. And, and we had to go through Blackberry's uh, dressing room to get on stage last night. There was no other way to do it. And they didn't care. You know, you, here's the food. Here's the, you know, there's a the bathroom there or whatever. I mean, everybody's in, in it for the music with this kind of music, especially, man. I mean, there's no real don't drink the smart water. Right. You're going on. <laughs> it's, hey, gentlemen, it's not, yeah, I want to take... Hey, this is Travis. There's no... Uh, okay. Sorry. Obnoxious Kawasaki Ninja's driving by. Um, no. There's, there's, there's not... It's not a competition uh, thing with, you know, with guys like this. It's, it's these, you know, and you want... Everybody wants everybody to do well. It's not like, yep. you know, stick these guys, you know out of yeah. our way we don't want to look at them we don't want to see them let them do their <clears throat> opening set and get them get them out of the building or something like right. that it's like those guys have, are so so sweet they you know come up and complimented us on on, on particular yeah, specific they're watching parts the of our set, set. Beautiful. you know like we're watching their you know they're sat, watching ours yeah we we sat outside by the bus last night before the bus rolled and and you know paul the guitar player uh, the other, you know, Charlie and Paul play, both play guitar, but uh, mm-hmm. Paul, the guitar player, and I, we, we sat and just dweebed out on guitar talk for, you know, an hour. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, hey, man, can I, that, that James Park guitar you're playing, you got that handy? And I was like, yeah, man, it's inside here. He's like, man, can I go inside and play Respect. it real quick? You know, and he's like, man, when we get to Portland, just come over and play with my rig, you know, like, just pick up anything you want and, and see what you think about this guitar or that guitar. Yeah. He's got this Gibson that I, that I was, I was stoked on and he was like man just come over and pick it up and play it see what you think these guys are these are, these are real dudes and they're real musicians and uh yeah you know let me let me throw this back to uh kenneth for a second here let's step back in the studio man let's get back in your <laughs> format what it takes for kenneth Bryan to walk in the studio are you a digital or are you an analog man <clears throat> i'm both man i'm a combination of whatever works i what I really, when I really learned in the studio, I learned, you know, my the method that I used from Johnny Salmon that I worked with in North and out, North Alabama. Johnny produced Brothers and Sisters with Allman Brothers, Tucker Band stuff, Clapton. I mean, just you name it. He 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 was the guy, and you know, uh, he taught me so much about <clears throat> about the recording process. I mean, I've been in you know studios since I was a kid, but mm-hmm. what I learned from Johnny was going in and you know, getting a really good snare sound, really good rhythm section sound, and then just cutting everything live, you know, and capturing lightning in a bottle and then going back. The only thing we really redo is the vocals. You know, we'll go back and redo the vocals. Sometimes we use a live vocal, but I mean, a lot of the guitar solos, 85% of the guitar solos, parts and everything are all live. And, um, but I, I will, you know, record 
you know, we, we did the last record with David Bianco in North Hollywood. And David, Rick Rubin's engineer for a long time. He's done Lucinda's last, I don't know how many records he's worked. You, you can't throw a rock at, you know, the internet without finding anything that David's worked on. It's Chili Peppers, ACDC, whatever. But right. I like to use, the, you know, to use Pro Tools, but also to use, you know, really high quality pre's. Johnny had a nice old West Star console, Quad 8, that we used. Um, but you record digitally, but through a console, then mix it onto two track to get it to get it mastered. You know, like so you get the you get the tools of the digital, but then you are able to capture the warmth. You know, going back to tape. Sure. And I've done you know strictly tape, and we've done like when I did Travis's record, I produced his record for Travis, and it was called uh, um. Between someday and never. Got walking by with a Georgia Theater shirt on, man. What's up, man? How you doing? What, are you playing tonight? Yeah. Right on. We're from Kenneth Bryan Band. You guys turn right. Yeah, uh, Charlie Crocker. Oh, Charlie Crocker. Right on. I'm doing an interview. <laughs> we played with Blackberry sell last night. <laughs> awesome, man. Anyway, hey, let, me, let, but, let, uh, let me ask you. Let, let me jump in real quick. Let me ask you a question, okay? Because this is on my mind. I got to find this out because I ask this all the time. And Travis, I'm going to throw this to you, brother. You're concrete, okay. man. You've got a concrete relationship in this band, so you're not going anywhere. But I want to ask you oh, a yeah. question. I want you to answer it honest because everything on Jackie's Groove is about keeping it real. Let's talk about this man called Kenneth Bryan. He's a front man, and every front man I've known has been a little touched. And that's what makes him a front man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I want to ask, as a musical brother itself, and, and just because I, I, a lot of the emerging artists, a lot of the young, we have a huge listening audience of young cats growing up in this business. Travis, honestly, is this man an easy man to work with, or can he be a fucking prick? <laughs> go go ahead go ahead and do it well you know i don't like him one bit i never have but no, I'm just kidding. no the, the work you know what to be quite honest the the work part is is not not tough at all uh okay it's you know it's, it's especially creatively um, okay when you get into talking about the business side of things and we kind of I, I don't know Kenneth, please correct me if i'm wrong but i, I, I think we both feel like from the business side of things, he and I both play a role in that. I, pl- I play a role in that as well as he does. Um, so when you're talking about that, um, there are going to be disagreements. And of course. I think what we figured out a long time ago is that the most of the disagreements that we have and most of the blow-ups or whatever that we have are only in terms of both of us having the best interest of the the work and the band at heart. So it's really hard to hold a resentment at somebody you just had a, 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 a an argument with, um, knowing that, hey, this guy just wants the best thing for the band as well. We might look at different ways to do it. It's like, hey, let's go over here to, you know, whatever. I got, we got to get over here to the, to the Starbucks. Well, I want to go down this street. Well, hell, fuck that. I want to go down this street, you know? And it's like, you know, I'm not going to hate him for wanting to go down the different right. street than I want. We both want to get to Starbucks. Of course. You know? But, it, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> for anybody you spend that much time with, you're going to have, you're gonna, you know. Of course. Like, uh, and we've known each other for 16, 18 yeah. years or something. I mean, yeah. We've, I mean, we've, we've, we've screamed about each other in the parking lot, but, you know, it's, I don't know, man. I, I, I definitely, you know, like you said, all front men are touched, man. I think everybody that plays music is a little off, you know. Oh, in a way, and I talked to Lucinda a lot about that. You know, there's something, there's got to be something wrong <laughs> for you to keep wanting to do this forever and ever and just, or something right or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, everybody on our whole team, man, I mean, we have good people and, and everybody's in it for the music and what's going on behind the groove yes. and not for stardom and not for, you know, need money, but you got to eat, you know, and all that stuff. Absolutely. But I'm just really hardcore about the music and keeping everything music first. And Steve Ferroni's helped us with that. Mm-hmm. And Scott Thurston and the way that Tom Petty does things where he, you know, he can afford to obviously, but he keeps music first. And I think when yeah. I'm being, you know, when I've got my chest out and I'm, I'm speaking loud, you know, which is mm-hmm. I'll do. It's about that. It's about keeping it in that going in that direction. And I'm not, yeah, you know, and you know, I don't think, yeah, go ahead. I, I'm not doing this to stir. I'm not here. To, I'm not trying to stir shit. I just wanted to find out because I know I've worked with plenty of pricks, man, in this industry, and you know, and I still work yeah. with them as much as yeah. they, as much as they hate me, as much as I hate them. 
I mean, it's the way you say fuck you. I say fuck you with love in my heart, if that makes any sense, you know? That's right. And, uh, well, and, and, and it's one thing I wanted to find out here because, you know, we're blown out. This is uh, the last three minutes of the second segment. I have to ask you a question. In the lack of album sales in this industry and the, in the more driven situation that we have to be to become a, a full entity by myself, you don't have a thousand people. And I also want to give a shout out to your PR girl by the name of Karen Webb. She's, uh, she's yeah, here to message awesome. me. Yeah, she just wanted to make she's sure how everything was going smooth. And, and so I just want to make sure. Guys, go ahead and say hi to her real quick for me. Hey, Karen. There you hey, go. Thank you. Perfect. Sorry, we didn't return your text she, a few she, minutes ago. She texted us right before and said, "Did you guys call in yet?" <laughs> yeah, no. She's, she's a Virginia. She just, she's a Virginia girl too. So yeah, she, she gets just messaged us. me. That's the thing, you know. She's able to deal with uh, some rednecks like us. So. <laughs> hey, you know what, man? Hey, guys. You know, when we come back on the third segment, I want to talk about your fourth album called "With Lions," and that was uh, yeah, that sure. was introduced to the uh, the industry on May nineteenth of this year. I want to find out how things are going. I mean, you guys got a lot of 11 songs. You're still believing in putting a full album out, but a lot of artists now are doing albums when they're only going to be releasing singles to see how the audience likes it. I mean, you know as well as I do on record release uh, Tuesdays, what we used to have when we used to have record stores, and you'd go out and buy an album, and there was only one song on it that you liked. And then after you gave it um, the the album some credence, and all of a sudden you find out that the songs that you didn't like are the songs you end up loving. You know, and I'm I'm proud that you guys are still pulling out full-size albums here, man, because... And that shows how oh, yeah. old I am when I'm using the word album, you know, and I want to talk more yeah, in depth about the song. <laughs> yeah, man. And I want to know, yeah. I, you know, I want to know what, what makes you guys work? How much control do you have on the social media of the Kenneth Bryan band, you know, or do you have a team that's out there um, that you're doing what you're doing best is going on stage. But nowadays it's too expensive to have a team to go out there. And then sometimes you find yourself um, losing control of where you want your message and your music to go. So when we get back, I want to talk to both of you, and I want you guys to put your thinking caps on, because I want to find out exactly, as I do with all my interviews, where you're finding the industry. Are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Where does your band fall into? And then the quintessential question, where do you want to see yourselves in five years out there, man? And do you believe in what David Grohl said, um, that he believes in five, year, uh, five years, um, music stores will be back in existence in the United States of America? I don't see it happening. But I want your opinion. So go ahead and reserve that. Think about it on the break and we get back. I want to get more. And the last segment also is how we're going to be able to stock and hunt down the Kenneth Bryan band along with Travis. So we're going to show you URLs and everything else. And give the shout out to the instruments you guys are using on stage. So with that said, guys, long-winded. This is Jackie Bertoni. Jackie's Groove brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. You're into all things music. And I'm proud and privileged, man, talking to my new brothers. Kenneth and Travis of the Kenneth Bryan Band. So when we come back on segment number three, the final segment of a one-hour interview on Emerging Mondays, we'll be right back after the short break. We're going to get last and get down and dirty and reel it all in with these two brothers. You guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the short message. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. 
Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Hi, this is Michael McDonald, and you're listening to my good buddy Jackie Bertoni on Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome back to the final segment of a one-hour interview um, with my brothers from the Kenneth Bryan Band, Kenneth Bryan and Travis. Hey, man, you know what? I, I, hey. I'm hard pressed. I'm hard pressed to call you guys, you know, an emerging artist, man, because you guys have already earned your stripes, and you know, you are the third show on Emerging Monday. So I'm going to put you guys in a mix between Emerging Monday. I'll have Florentino work it out because uh, you, you guys are both a little bit long in the tooth to be called young musicians in this <laughs> industry. So we'll work that That's thing right. out, guys. But uh, I'm really, really expecting it. You know. We all do things, you know. You, you, we all. We, it, it takes an. You know, it takes an island. It takes a, uh, you know, a, a, a village, as they say. I'm sorry to make everything together itself. I like to believe that I'm in 100 percent control, and we'll pick that up a little bit too. But you know, the people I'm thankful for, man, is like the gentleman you spoke to a little while ago, um, uh, Paul Berzetsky. He's the CEO of the uh, the network and also my engineer, and the gentleman that keeps these crazy lights on is a gentleman by the name of uh, nice. Florentino Buenaventura. I mean, he's not a, he's not a professional wrestler. All those names sounds like it. So. With that said, you know, we have a little a little spiel we're doing here, and he's going to come and join us tonight, guys, because I'm going to take a, a breath so I can sneeze. So with that said, um, Kenneth and Travis, say hi to Florentino. Florentino, say hi to the boys. Hey, Kenneth. Hey, Travis, hey. How you doing, gentlemen? Hey, what's hey, going hey. on, man? Oh, man, just uh, out here making a Monday happen. You know how that goes, guys, and I'm really appreciative oh, yeah. you guys are on the network, and uh, really appreciative of Karen. She's such a sweetheart, and... She definitely, uh, uh, you know, she alerted us to how amazing you guys were, and you know, we, we're glad that we've been able to have you on the network a couple of times. We're uh, going to get loud, and now with Jackie's groove and a couple of different focuses and and directions, but uh, still the same great music that you guys put on and sharing with our, our listening audience. So appreciate it, gentlemen. Oh, man. We're happy to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you for having yeah. us. Definitely, definitely. And I'm um, hopefully going to have you see you guys come down. This neck of the woods, we're down in San Diego. We'll, we'll definitely go out and support you guys when you get down this this, this way. And, uh, um, you know, kind of with that said, uh, how can people find out about you guys? What, where, where can they stalk you and get touring dates and the new albums and all that other fun stuff? Uh, well, uh, Trav? definitely uh, Kenneth Bryan Band dot com. Uh, uh, you know, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You know all those places, um, and we, you know, keep up with all that stuff. So you can always, you know, tune into our Facebook or Instagram and find cool live videos that we're doing. And we're always, we're always fooling around. You know, hey, let's. Oh, this is cool. Let's, you know, hey, we're sound checking. Let's, let's do some Facebook Live or you know whatever. There's always some fun stuff to look at on there. But one cool thing about that, especially is the Facebook and Instagram, is that. Uh, uh, you were asking a few minutes ago about, you know, how we, what, what capacity we are in control of that. Right. And, uh, you know, we try to do real well about staying in touch personally with, you know, with people who are, uh, communicating with us through our Facebook wall or, you know, mm -hmm. or, uh, through Instagram or whatever. I mean, we have, you know, we run that, you know. So yeah, definitely, you know, we like to stay awesome. in touch with our fans. <laughs> and, I, and I think that's one of the beauty parts of the, the way the industry is now is that it's it's not hard to have 
artists and fans connect where before it was such a, you know, it was a, a stage, you know, a set of security guards and then, you know, they weren't far away, but you never really got a chance to connect with them. And that's, that's very well, cool. Now you guys can do that now. As soon as, as soon as we get done, we go out and talk to everybody there. You know, I used to rent, I rented a place from Ernest Tubbs niece in Texas. And she said okay. that when, when uh, Willie Nelson was out opening up for Ernest Tubbs, or Ernest came back there and Willie and, you know, whoever, you know, Tom Paul, everybody was hanging out smoking weed or whatever they were doing. And he said, what the hell are you boys doing back here? And said, oh, we're just hanging out. And he said, you better get out there and talk to everybody that came to see you sing tonight. And they said, oh, we don't need to do that, man. It's, you know, 1970. He said, you get your ass out there and talk to everybody. He said, this is how you, if you he said, you can get it. That's how you keep it, you know. And you watch yeah. Willie Nelson. He's 84 years old, and he still stands out there for four and a half hours talking to everybody that came to the show. You know, so I that's want to talk to brilliant. everybody, man. That is brilliant. That is brilliant, gentlemen. Well, hey, man, you, you appreciate you guys blessing us with your with you coming on the network. And I tell tell folks once you've been on our network, uh, your family for life, and you know now you're you're a double family guy. So much appreciated. Oh man, thank you. I know that you've been having a good show with Jackie. So I'm going to pass it back, Jackie. Please take it away, sir, cool. and, uh, and, and you know have the rest of your show kicking it. Thanks, thanks, man. brother. Thanks, man. Hey, gentlemen, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question, and I've got I got to give this credit to my better half. Going on 34 years of marriage, just kicked my ass all these years. But she came nice. up with a great, great question, man, and I love this question. Again, I've asked every artist this question. I'm going to throw it to both of you. You choose who's going to answer them. Actually, I'll go ahead and have you answer, Travis. Okay. My wife asks, and I put this to him: If you weren't playing music, if you weren't in the music business, period. What would Travis be doing? Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, man, I don't think that there was just – there was never a time that I wasn't going to do it. Um, and I think Kenneth's probably the same way. Uh, in fact, I know he is. Um, but I remember being uh, like literally three years old, and I knew that I wanted – I heard the first thing I remember, everybody, you know, everybody has a weird – first memory they you know the first thing i remember was whatever uh seeing whatever my dog run across the living room or whatever it is but the first thing i remember is hearing piano man by billy joel and anybody that has anything to say about that can go to hell <laughs> I loved, hey I please loved it. i remember being you know a little kid maybe three years old that's and mm-hmm. and hearing that and being like okay that's you know I didn't, you know, I didn't understand the logistics of it, but I, like that was going to be a big part of something for me. And man, um, Travis, he's always dodging a woman's question. <laughs> I love it. What's that? That's a classic, Travis. Always dodging a woman's question. Wise man. <laughs> um. So there was just never a time I wasn't going to fucking play music. I mean, like, right. I, so I don't know. I never thought about like, well, what else could I? go into i never had a backup plan i never was gonna go to college and get a degree in whatever accounting or something like that i wasn't good at math or you know whatever i was i was just gonna you know i I don't know i mean like i can't speak for how other people live and make their choices and all that stuff but i know that for me particularly uh, in my experience i have noticed that most people that have a backup plan wind up using it Mm mm-hmm I agree. So I just I agree. was just going to play music, and that's what I know how to do. And I man, feel like I think kind Travis of would duty. be a, a scientist or something, man, like a kind of herpetologist or something, man. He's just like I always, do love, yeah, I know, do love reptiles. I knows like a lot about that stuff, you know. It's crazy. Yeah, it's just, it's got that kind of brain. You. Kevin, what about you, brother? What would you be doing? Uh, well. You know, like him, I never had a backup plan. That's all I ever wanted to do. But I grew up farming. I liked that. I didn't like the hours so much. Uh, but, you know, I honestly, man, I was a step away from joining the Marines. And, uh, you know, I probably, I honestly, I probably would have pursued a career in the military if I didn't do this. And it sounds kind of crazy for a guitar player. but No, oh, man. Um, You're serving the for public people like us, Yeah, man. For people like us, it's not a whole lot of opportunity. I was going to have a 10th grade dropout. And, uh, you know, I don't know, man, that's the only, the only other thing I ever thought about doing, but I was, thank God, already playing guitar and already doing my thing. And then decided to, to, you know, to pursue that above all else. So, but that's a good question. That's because women are smart 
and always have a different insight, man. You know, it's crazy. It's like yeah, talking to our and, drummer and, Chris about that, you know. Let it's me like, ask you this question, yeah. guys, too. What? Well, this is on my mind, too. I'm sorry I got a little bit of delay here. Um, I'm yeah. going to throw this to you, Kevin, uh, since the, your name is on the marquee. I want you to think about this, man, because I remember, like, mine was, like, was back, uh, actually it happened to me in 1990. Where were you? What were you doing? What were you thinking when you first heard yourself on the radio, brother? What, what was going through your mind? The first time I ever heard one of my songs on the radio? Yeah, exactly. Uh, man, I think... Uh... Well, it was like back in, in North Florida when I was doing like, uh, I would do these things on Sunday on this country station. Right. And, you know, I can't, I've got it on a tape somewhere, you know what I mean? I, it was a big deal. You know, it was a really of big course. deal to me. Because, I mean, I've been, you know, working, doing this forever. But at that time, I thought forever. I wasn't even that old, you know. When you're, when you're young, you think everything is, you know, in some impending forever type of thing. But anyway, man, it was a... Uh, it was a big moment. I mean, it, cause it was, you know, my mom heard it, you know, people around there, it kind of changed perception. Mm-hmm. It's like now when, when, when people see us like on that Jimmy Kimmel live stream thing that Harley did, right. you know, all of a sudden, you know, I've been doing this for, you know, you know, to 18 years straight, but people are like, Oh, you know, so it kind of changes the perception of the people around you more than maybe it does for you. It, it makes it more real for, for them. You know, people call your mom, my mom and go, Hey, you know, I heard your son on the radio. He's actually really good. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> so it's, so, and, it's, it's cool. So, I mean, you know, with that said, you know, just brought up mom, you know, I'm a mama's boy, man. I've always have been, and I always will be. Yeah, my me mama, too, yeah. I lost moms in 1992, but my mom was around oh, I'm sorry. long enough to, to that, yeah, man. no, man, it's, that's my rock, man. But my mom was long, around long enough to see her son on the big stage, you know, and I don't yeah. care about all the fine ass women out there. Um, I married mine. Um, in all the great crowds and stuff, but the first time I saw my mom was smiling on the stage, you know, it was at the uh, it was at the Universal Amphitheater when it had the top off of it, and uh, I yeah. could oh, I could see my mom because I know exactly where I sat her in the audience, and I and I watched a tear come down her eye. Of course, I lost. Yeah, it. man. But my mom said yeah. one thing to me afterwards. She says, "I don't care who you are, or who you think you are. I'm your mama." And she sure. goes, "I'll be your mo- I'll be your mother first, then I'll be your friend second. And when you step out of line, she goes, I'll take you out of this world like I fucking brought you into it with nothing. That's right. So, you know, so with you know, that said, to, to both of you, with that said, how, uh, am I going to assume your both mamas are with us right now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thankfully. Yeah, both of them are. Thank God. Never, never stop and, hugging a man, even in public. Now, going back to you, Kenneth, um, mama, mama's seen your success. How does that make you feel yeah. inside, man? It's great because, you know, they were with me from, you know, my folks were with me from the start. They loved what I was doing and they've always been really supportive of everything that I did. And, you know, I was mean, listening to you talk, you know, about your mom there. And it's, I mean, I, you know, just kind of swelling up over here, man. And, you know, I, I'm with you, man, because that's the important thing. I was just home. I got to go home for two weeks and man, I didn't want to leave my mom. You know, I got to go do what I do. But, it's you know, especially everybody's getting older and everything and it's just, you know, you have to spend as much time with those people as possible with the people that are important to you. But that's what's good about doing this is because all these people that I'm out with playing music are important to me. And the people, you know, we get to spend time together as family. And if anybody messes up, somebody calls them out on their shit. And it's just like family. I mean, me too. I mean, it may be my name, but if I step out of line, Travis is going is to get me. Or our tour manager, John Stone, is going to get me. So it makes it easier to have people that are, that are family out with you on the road. And Tra- yeah. Travis and John are literally family. They're cousins. So, Hey, Travis and Kevin, I said yeah. something earlier about, um, you know, I'll, I'll throw this back to Travis. I said Kenneth is a little touched. He's a front man. But, again, what <laughs> musician is in touch? You know, we're always looking for acceptance, man. I remember my mama, mama said to me something years ago, the day before I got, two days before I got married. I'm going uh-huh. on 34 years, as I said. And I said to my mom, I said, Mom, you know, uh, you know, I thank you for everything you've done for me in my career. You know, you, Daddy died and when I was eight years old. You know, you were the quintessential you know, when it was hip to be a single mom, if, you, if there's such a thing of being hip to be a single mom, she was there. She taught me about everything about life. She was there at the sporting events. She was there front row at the shows. But mom, I sure. said, Mom, I really wish you would have given me more credence, more props. We didn't use the word props back then, but, you know, and my mom said, let me just tell you something about you, uh, about you son. She goes, I delivered you into this world. I know that I wasn't going to blow smoke up your ass 
every time you 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 reached a new height in your career. She goes, so with that said, the reason why I didn't do that is you strived harder and harder and harder to get better and better and better so you would impress mom. And my mom said, look, no joke. My mom said, if you took a good shit on the corner of Fifth and Main, you'd expect the traffic to stop for you and applaud. You know, and that's and see, but see, but that's the way we are as musicians, man. We want to be accepted. We want to, we want our, we want our talents to touch people. We want people right. to leave the arena. And I'm going to ask this question in the last two minutes and fifty seconds, both to the, uh, the both of you, Kevin. What do you want the audience to take away from one of your shows? What do I want them to take away from the shows? Yeah. I think our job is to get people away from whatever it is that they're going through and try, or, you know, just to get them out of whatever's going on in their head and, and to take them somewhere with the music, you know, spiritually, I mean, what's going on behind the music spiritually, man, that's where I've always been communicating with the audience through music spiritually. If I can just sum it up, that's why I'm in this. That's why I do this. If I didn't, if that wasn't happening, then I, I don't know why else we would do it. And to see that happen with people. Last night, there's something really horrible happened outside of the hotel, and I don't want to go into it, but this girl witnessed it, and I witnessed it. And later on, she was in the audience, and I was singing, and I could see it in her eyes, and I was singing it to her. And it was just to be able to take somebody away from something and, and get them somewhere else, you know, is an amazing gift. And um, and I thank God for it. Hey, guys, you know, and, and I thank yep. God for you guys being part of this and making my show a worldwide hit, man. And that's, and you know, we knew it would be successful. We knew that I have 30 years under my belt of being the top five percussionists in the industry, but now being one of the top radio guys, it's uh, it's exciting because I've always wanted to be in radio. So, and it's because of you know guests like you that makes it go. And, and so I want the listening audience out there to understand the last minute here, do yourselves a favor, go on to iTunes and where else you can buy music. Also the Kenneth Brown, excuse me, Kenneth Bryan band.com. But I want you to pick up their their fourth studio album called White Lions. It was out since uh, been out since with, May nineteenth. With and, lions. Uh, with lions. Excuse me, I apologize. Eleven songs in this amazing, amazing collection of music, man. And I got to tell you, the single "You're Not Mine" is beautiful, man. So, with that said, right. guys, in the last fifty seconds, I want to thank you personally from Jackie's Groove and the Inner Talk fan, uh, Radio family uh, for you know bring your talents again, guys. I re- respond with lions. Go pick up the album, man. We're not doing this. To star, we're doing this to keep a roof over our heads, man. As I always say to everybody else in this industry, listeners, stop stealing fucking music, guys. Pay for it. You know, I don't walk into your office and piss on your uh, studio monitor. Uh, I mean, your uh, your computer. Don't do it to our music. So, and keep music alive. Local music is important, guys. Keep music alive. Period. So, with that said, I want everybody to stand up. If you're driving, don't stand up. But I want to give a standing ovation to my brothers Kevin and Travin. Travin, how's that for grammar? Kevin and Travis from the Kenneth Bryan Band. You guys, we love you, man. KennethBryanBand.com. Search these boys. Patronize these boys. You guys, you've been officially jumped in. You're part of the family here at Intertalk. We're we're thankful, man. So I thank Karen. I will thank her. And you guys, just do do what you do best, man. Kick fucking ass. All right, guys. I finish everything up by saying thank you, brother, man. Peace to music. And we will talk. And, hey, I'll see you guys in Humphreys hopefully next month with uh, with the Doobie Brothers. Talk to you guys soon. Much love. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. 
Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. 